Today's lesson is multiplying fractions by fractions part two of 3.4. Make sure you put the date. You need blue and yellow. That's right. Miss Fisher found colors that are going to work well together. Blue and yellow. And you need to set your journal up like this. Push pause until it gets done. So two ways to model multiplying fractions by fractions. We know the bar model and we know the area model. So I'm going to put a problem just right here in the middle and we're going to model it both ways. Um, the problem I would like to do is going to be, let's do a pretty basic one. Maybe we will do um, two-fifths times one-third. Two-fifths times one-third. That's the problem. We're going to do it using the bar model. You ready? The first thing I do is I model the second fraction, one-third. So in order to do that with the bar model, I have to draw a bar. I start at zero and I go to one and I have to show a third. So I just show a third. And I'm going to use, let's use, um, should we use, let's use yellow. Okay, so we'll use yellow for this one. There is one third. Can you see it? I color it in. One third. The second step for bar models is I go to the first fraction, and now I take each one of those little thirds, that one, and that one, and that one, and I break it up into fifths. Okay, so four lines. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ooh, I can't tell where that other one was. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's right there. So those are my bold lines. I really want to make those bold. There you go. Okay, so I split all of them into fifths, and now I need to circle two of them in e two of them in the colors. So I just go like this: one, two. You could have circled all of it, like you've seen people probably do this. That's fine; it doesn't matter. So my answer is: how many have both colors? Two. How many were there in all? One, two, three, four, five. So five, ten, fifteen. Two fifteenths. Now I'm going to show that exact same one, only doing it in the area model. Okay? Um, think about what you have to do with that problem in order to do the area model. I love it. Remember, the very first thing that you're going to do is draw a whole box. Okay, so I draw one whole box. Looks like this. I take the second fraction, which is a third and I have to show it going up and down like the tall french fries and I'm going to use yellow for my one-third. There it is. Color it in. Now I go to the second fraction, fifths, and I have to show five, because of fifths, french fries laying left to right. I have to show five of them, which means I need four lines. One, two, three, four. Oh. I just, I did not even mean to do this, but my blue lines lined up exactly like there was going to be five total pieces, which is what I need. I needed four lines. If yours don't line up exactly, it's okay. You just need to have four lines. You can try to keep being as awesome as Miss Fisher. Just kidding. Okay, so do you see how we have that now? Think about five french fries laying on their side. One, two, three, four, and five. And I need to color in two of the five. I start on the left and I color, sorry, let's try that again. I start over here in the top left and I color in two. There's one of them colored in. You can tell that it's making like a green over there. And then here's two of the french fries laying on their sides colored in. It doesn't make a perfect green, but you can tell it's not just yellow and it's not blue. It's got a little mix to it. So my answer on this one, is how many have both colors? Two. How many were there in all? One, two, three, four, five. So five, ten, fifteen. Look, same answer. Two fifteenths, two fifteenths. That's a pretty small fraction. Well, think about it. If you only had a third of a candy bar or a piece of licorice or bread or whatever, and you had to give two fifths of your little piece. So here's my piece of candy bar I had. I had a third and I had to give two fifths of it away. Right? What I gave away, the two fifteenths, was not very much. Here's what I would be left with, but that's the part, that's the answer. So pretty interesting to look at 
both of those different models and you can kind of decide which one you like best. Um, I know which one I like best, but you can make that one choice for yourself. Here is what we're doing today. Oh, it's so great. Maybe some of you have already noticed this, okay? So you're gonna draw two blue lines going from both of these models. Maybe some of you have already noticed this, but there is a standard algorithm. Now we've just been learning how to model. So today we're learning what the standard algorithm is. We'll actually call it just method. The standard method, because I don't really know that it's an algorithm, but the standard method. Think about this for a minute. Two fifths times one third was two fifteenths. Do you see a relationship between all of this? First of all, what was two times one? Two. What's five times three? 15. That's right. So the standard method is to multiply straight across. <laughs> All of that modeling. Can you believe it? Don't you love how Ms. Fisher makes you do all of the modeling and all of the hard work before I teach you the standard or the quick? It's because you need to know both, okay? And now it just feels like a breeze because you know both. So the standard method when you're multiplying fractions is you don't have to draw out every single one of them. You can multiply straight across. Now there's going to be situations where if when you multiply, you know that you can simplify, right? So you just need to read the directions. Does it say you need to simplify? Does it say you don't need to? You know? So multiply straight across. I'm going to write this. Read the directions to see if you need to simplify. Read the directions to see if you need to simplify. That's it, not joking, that was the whole thing. Isn't that so great? You can just multiply straight across. So all of that work, think about all of this modeling. Three fourths times five six, what's three times five? 15, what was four times six? 24. So that's like the quick method of getting it done, but you need to understand what was happening, okay? We were taking a piece of a piece. So what I was taking was actually really, really tiny, okay? So now that you know that that is how we do this, what we're gonna be doing today is a lot of practice. So you read the directions to see if you need to simplify, and then right here, you can use a model to explain your thinking to help you understand or to get extra credit. <laughs> so if you're doing a test and you want to get extra credit, that's a great way to show that you know how to model fractions multiplied by, fra by fractions. Okay, but now what you need to do is rip out page 93 of your math workbook and go to the top and put your name and number on both sides and we are gonna cruise through some of these practice pages. Math is gonna be really easy and really quick today because you did so much journal yesterday. Are you ready? Okay, this is just a quick review. We're not gonna do all of them. We're just gonna do some of them. Are you ready? Number six, one seventh times six. It says find the product you do not, use your blue here, you do not need to simplify. Look, there's not room to model all these. So we're just gonna do it. Oh, this is like from a couple days ago. What do you do when you're trying to multiply by a whole? Well, you see, is the denominator in that in a fact family? Like, how did I get from seven to six? No. So now you just throw one underneath it. You extend the bar. Remember, you connect them. And you multiply straight across. One times six is six. Seven times one is seven. Final answer, six sevenths. Number seven, throw one underneath it. Connect the bars. Five fourths. You don't have to even simplify that. You get to leave it. Pretty crazy. Next one, 2 thirds times 9. Throw 1 under. Connect. 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3. Oh, it drives me crazy that we don't have to simplify. Because 18 thirds is 6, and 5 fourths is 1 and a fourth. It's just so crazy. Let's skip number 9. Do number 10. Oh, fraction by fraction. Multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 9 times 2 is 18. Seriously, it's this easy. Number 11. 1 12th. Why don't you do number 12 and 13 and 14 on your own? Pause the video, come back and check it. All 
All right, you should be back, and these should be your answers. 2 fifteenths, 15 twenty-fourths, and 3 twenty-ones. Okay, you can totally do this. As you can see, it's actually pretty easy. So skip a -roo, skip a -roo. let's do number 22. 22, 1 times 1 is 1. 10 times 10 is 100. These are so easy, 1 hundredth. What about number 23? See if you remember how to still do those. Pause the video, see if you can do it. You should have thrown a 1 underneath and multiplied straight across. See, can you see how it's driving me crazy that we don't fix these? Oh, because 12 thirds is 4. So crazy. And let's do number 29. 6 times 7 is 42. 7 times 8, 56. That's all you had to do, folks. Hope you're paying attention. Turn it over. Now, page 94 is a whole different ball game. But it is still solving fractions. Still solving multiplication with fractions. Um, it might have whole numbers and fractions, but you should know how to do that. But we are going to focus actually mostly just on fractions by fractions. So, if we're looking at these problems, why don't you see if you can find which ones are going to be fractions by fractions? Will it be this one? It has a whole number and fractions. So probably not. What about this one? A fourth a mile. She's going to go 13 times. Nope, that's a whole by a fraction. Ms. Fisher's looking for just fractions by fractions. A whole and a fraction, oh my goodness. One third of those campers, one fifth. Ooh, ring, 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 a ling. We got us a number 33. That one we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing number 34. Look, two thirds and then the, the word half. Ooh, we got fractions and fractions. Number 35, we got fractions and fractions. We got this. So, what we're going to be doing is just cutting those out. I know, we're already almost done. Isn't that crazy? We're going to be cutting these out. Number 33, number 34, and number 35. So, what I want us to do is in our journal, turn the page. We've done those notes on the first page. And we're going to cut out 33, solve it. Then we're going to do 34, and then 35. So, I want you to be really careful with how you cut it out because maybe there's some stuff on the other side that we could cut out to put as samples of work that we've done. So, I'm just cutting as small as I can. I'm only doing 33, 34, and 35. I don't want the check for understanding. Do I even want the blue lines? Yeah, let's keep the blue lines. We'll write our answer on them. Okay, so as you can see, I have 33, 34, 35. Okay, but what I want to see is on this back side, which would have been page, I don't know, my number is my numbers cut off, I have no idea. Would have been this side. I want us to see if there's a way to put in some of these problems. Um, I think there, yeah, I think there is. We did, we did 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, 14. We did all those. So why don't we put those in? We don't have to do more work. We just have to cut it and glue it in as examples. Um, you do not have to simplify your answer. Oh, it just kills me. So we're only putting in... Sorry, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, and 14. So, this little scrap and the big outline scrap you can throw away, but you need these three story problems and then this chunk right here, the 7 through 14. Okay, so let's put the 7 through 14 at the very top of our journal on the back. Make sure not to cover any holes. Go ahead and get it glued in. If you need some extra time, you can push pause on the video. Now I have my three story problems. Now, what I want to do here is I actually want to cut them and space them out so that we can do the work underneath it. So what you'll need to do is cut, you know, keep the blue line with that story problem. So it looks like number 34 is the largest one as far as size. So I have 33, 34, and 35. Will you please get those glued in as well? and space them out. So here's 33, space it out, here's 34, and there's 35. Make sure your number 35, you don't put it all the way at the bottom. You need to be able to solve it underneath and then write your answer on it. So get those glued in, make sure you leave space for what you need to leave space for, and I'll catch you in the next video.